just introduce the panel for today. So obviously we've got uh, Dave Perks, who is a, um, a developer from Coalition Properties and one of the co-developers of, of Lush and really been heavily involved in the construction process, really update you in terms of where we are from the construction process. And just to recap that Lush is a, is a, is a joint initiative between Coalition Properties, Main Street Properties and Union 3. And then Clifton Smithers, who is one of the directors of Union 3 and a, a co-developer of Lush. And Cliff will really be chatting quite largely around the aesthetics, the landscaping, and where we are from that perspective um, in, in respect of Lush. And then Tina Holstead, who many of you will know, who's a partner at Cox Yates. And Cox Yates are the team who are doing the conveyancing of Lush. And I think Tina will really be able to give you quite unique insights in terms of where we are with the deeds office, but also what that process will be. And especially for many of you who are first time buyers, really giving you insight into what will happen. I think things will really sort of start picking up now as we start reaching the end of, of construction and really giving you those unique insights into the steps. And then Devin DeLonga, who um, will probably be, <laughs> probably have a lot to say, <laughs> properties and um, the entity who run the sales, both within Lash, but also across Italy. And we really want today to be quite unique for owners in terms of giving you advice around the different options that you might face going forward, whether it be reselling or renting, and really got to sort of put Dev a little bit on the spot in terms of giving his recommendations around what he would recommend for you as an owner going forward. So um, I'm just going to kick off. And, and, and Dave, I think from your perspective, just really want to get an insight. Obviously, we're into, into level three now. I think it's, it's, it's massive for everyone. It's massive for the sales guys in terms of being able to sell again, but also in terms of guys being back on, on construction. So how's it been? Where we at with construction? And how seamless has that integration of, of ID construction been in terms of them getting back on site? Uh, thanks, Steph, and hello to everybody. Um, yeah, we were obviously delighted to, to come back on the 1st of June. Um, you know, uh, like many industries, uh, the construction industry hasn't escaped, um, you know, the, the lockdown um, period. And I think everybody was very relieved to get back to work on the 1st. And we've been very well led by Comprac, who are our, our safety officers in terms, of, in terms of the protocols that we need to do and the screening protocols of, of people um, entering the site. Um, it did take one or two days to iron out a couple of teething issues. But we, we did that pretty seamlessly and we're back and I'm delighted to say that we're back at, um, at full capacity right now. And then, and then Dave, in terms of upcoming show units being completed for owners to have a look at, where we were at? So, so Steph, in terms of some, uh, 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 what we've done basically is we've, um, we've revised our program, uh, you know, in light, in light of the lockdown. Um, and I have got a couple of dates to announce today to people. And um, the show units will be ready and fully furnished, fully snagged and ready for, um, for viewing Friday after next um, and we actually we, we're very very chuffed at the way that they've turned out and we're very excited to show to show those to prospective buyers and to buyers who, who, who bought in those particular areas um, the units that will be finished are a Brazilian condo as well as a villa um, and in terms of handover dates uh, we've revised the program <coughs> And we will now start handing over units from the 14th of August, 2020. And we're going to start with units number one to 30. Um, so if you bought in unit number one to 30, you can expect um, your handover date to be sometime from the, from the 14th of August. And, and in the balance of units 31 to 90, we're going to have a, a three month handover process. So the last unit will be handed over on the 14th of November. So we're literally talking just over two months for the first, for those first one to 30. That's it, you know, and, and, and the development's at that like exciting stage, you know, where, where um, you know, the vision is starting to appear in certain places, you know, there's, there's paint on the walls, there's detail on the externals of the building, we've got paving going in, there's a lot of um, landscaping happening. So, yeah, we're very, very excited to, to show people what, what things are going to look like in the flesh. And we're also very excited to furnish those units so that people can, can have a look at the livability of the units in the flesh, you know. And, and, and as, as I said very earlier, uh, earlier, we're very, very happy with them. Okay. And then, so Deb, we've always said you can't look at Lush in isolation. You've got to look at it in terms of 
the bigger picture within Eleni, Eleni too, and obviously the growth of Eleni and how, how successful it's been. So I know the Forest mm. Clubhouse has recently competed, and then the mm. last session we spoke about the Beach Clubhouse. So I don't know if you want to just, just chat about that, but also in terms of any additional facilities that will be available to Lush owners. Yes, thank you, Steph, and hello to everyone. Um, it's massive, I think, and we touched on it briefly in the, in the last Lush webinar. And I said it when we launched Lush oh, about two years ago, is that what we're going to experience as investors and owners at Lush is being part of this, um, this journey and watching all these attributes play out and establish themselves prior to us taking ownership of our, of our investments. And I think um, to touch on that now where Illileni is, and like you said, the completion of the clubhouse, Forest Clubhouse, um, we really enjoying um, the state establishing itself really, really well. So yeah, on the back of the, of the Forest Clubhouse, uh, it's now furnished. And um, so our homeowners are already enjoying that space. And um, you mentioned the Beach Club, uh, which has been top of the list. And it's been something we've been eyeing out for the last couple of years now to, um, to bring to life. And I think timing-wise with that, um, we're probably around 12 months away until the establishment. So that's Steph. We're still going through the whole zoning process. But again, that's just another attribute, as I mentioned, that we're going to be enjoying over this, over this journey. And then I know you have quite involved in, in working with um, Wes and the, and the rest of the LNE team in terms of selection of that beach club site. How important is that for specific sites? Um, position, 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 Steph. I think that's everything in property. And like I said, it, it took us two years to um, identify the right property. Um, it had to be on a stretch of, um, of, of beach fronts in Salt Rock, which is our premier beach on the North Coast. It's where we have the Mr. Price Pro. It's where we have our beach concerts. Um, it's the main beach and that's where everyone wants to be. So it took me personally two years to eventually find a property that came up um, uh, on the market for sale. Um, and um, yeah, we're fortunate enough to have acquired it. And again, like I said, we're just running through the motions now as far as the zoning is concerned. And um, hopefully in the next, we're three months behind now due to the lockdown and COVID, but um, hopefully within the next three to six months, we can have that zoning in place. We can start our renovation and it can be a space we can all start enjoying. Okay. And then what else is news within Eleni as a whole? Um, Steph, uh, quite a bit. Um, firstly, uh, the village, which are seven, well, we've just completed seven freestanding three-old homes. They're spec homes on the market. They're under the five-bar price tag. So for your um, a very exclusive flagship estate, it's a price point that no one can really achieve in a completed house. So that's something we're quite excited about that's gone to market. Um, we're busy and we're in the process now of... Um, finalizing a co-work space at the gates here at the, at the office precinct. So that's going to be a very cool, vibey space um, for guys who have their own. And I think what we've all learned of, uh, during lockdown is that you can actually work from home. So I think this space is also going to be, um, or get more energized, uh, which will also be cool. Uh, the leisure center, which just as much as the forest clubhouse is much anticipated, um, again, unfortunately, off the back of the lockdown and COVID, we're about three months behind with the, with the commencement of the, of the leisure center. So hopefully in the coming months, we can break ground there. And that's going to be an amazing space. So yeah, I think uh, most importantly for me, and um, we've seen it um, off the back of this last week, just being on site now and seeing Lush come to completion, the... The construction on site has really slowed down in the sense of scale. If you, if you think about your developments, your, your PUD, your sectional title developments are the ones that, that really get messy and really get busy. And um, we're in a very fortunate position now where our only two PUD or sectional title developments now are coming to an end um, in terms of their construction period. So the state is already starting to, to establish itself. And I think that's monumental for Illilani is that in the next few months, our two big animals known as Lush and Forest, we will be complete. So back to the establishments and the dust settling, it's, it's happening quicker than you think. Back to, uh, and again, I think proofs in the pudding, we were named early this year as one of the most progressive estates in the country. So 
I really think we're sitting in a fortunate position. Dave, just a, a question from Stephanie Wilkes that came through, just telling about you when you mentioned the timelines. It says, how they, does the timeline include the villas at Lush? Um, so if that refers to the 14th of August being the handover date, then yes, the first 12 villas. So, so villas 1 to 12 will be handed over um, from the 14th of August. The balance of the villas in the second phase will be handed up thereafter, uh, with the last villa being handed over on the 14th of November. Okay. And then Cliff, in the last session, we spoke about the Boabab and how the Boabab had been planted and, 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 and the process to get it there and obviously what a, what a big feature it's become. Can you just chat about where we are in terms of the landscaping and, and all the other aesthetic bits? Uh, perfect, Steph. And um, how's it, everyone? Lucky to be back. Um, quite an interesting process with the Boabab, sort of a couple of weeks before lockdown, um, we had like an 18 ton truck on site lifting this incredible tree, which we managed to source um, our landscape architects, Jason White, Lucas and David managed to source from a Zululand farm. And uh, yeah, after much negotiation with the farmer, we managed to get it down here and, and in the ground, it was quite a process. Um, we had to do it on a weekend, lots of health and safety measures in place, but um, yeah, and then we were sort of into lockdown and um, we've been waiting to get unlocked so that we can actually continue the process. And, and you know, like, uh, like Dev and Dave mentioned earlier, it's, 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 we're now in the finishing stages. So it's incredibly, incredibly exciting. Um, just in the last week, we've had, we've had our paving going in. We've had um, multiple areas getting greened up with beautiful plants. We've had a lot of our hardwood timber screens coming onto the villas. Um, for any of you that have been inside El Eleni and had a look at the, the, those villas on the north facing side, the timber has really just um, transformed the look of the building. So yeah, I think we're going to, we've got a lot of exciting um, landscaping and, and timber works to look forward to in the next couple of weeks. And honestly, in the next three weeks, uh, we're going to see a radically transformed external of the building. Um, and uh, it's, it's coming together. So yeah, um, and last the finishes within the the units. Units. So again, and the finishes within the units. We're very happy, eh, Steph. Um, you know, all the, all the subcontractors have been doing a fantastic job working together. Um, last night, I was going to say we did our first walk around in the evening, um, lights on, and that's always that's always a defining moment when you see the see the building in the evening. You know, you sort of get quite tarnished looking at it in the daytime all the time. But when you start seeing elements like landscaping, paint colors, um, the internal finishes coming together at night really makes a big difference. And um, so, yeah, every week is, is almost, um, it's a, every week's a week of anticipation. There's new finishes going in internally and externally. I mean, just this morning, we had a walk around with our lift consultants. Uh, we've got some exciting ideas that um, we're putting together um, on our lift so that even, even that, the experience for all our lush homeowners can be a unique experience, you know. So yeah, I'm super excited about how it's turning out. Uh, the colors are really coming together. The finishing quality is coming together. Um, yeah, I mean, for example, today we saw for the first time the timber treads coming on those Brazilian condos on the floating staircases. For, you know, so for those guys that have bought their um, I'm sure they're going to be really, really stoked. And then Cliff, obviously, like, like Davey said, two and a half months away from the first occupation. So I think now things like furniture packages and, and other aspects really become quite, quite critical, quite relevant. So I know that Union 3 created bespoke packages for Lush. So how will owners be able to see those firsthand? And I think the big question for prospective owners, would they be able to bond that within their purchase price? Yeah, it's an interesting, uh, interesting question, that Steph. And I think, uh, as as a lot of you guys know, we furnished the the first ground floor um, fever unit um, at the end of last year. So we have had a wave of buyers and interested parties that have actually come to site and had a look at that furnished unit. That's a two bed, four, uh, 104 square meter unit. Um, and as Dave mentioned earlier, in the next two or three weeks, we're going to have two more units furnished. Um, and it really just it gives people um, an idea of space. And it's one thing looking at a plan, but to actually walk into a furnished unit, um, 
makes a huge difference. And, and as developers, we wanted, to, we wanted to give that to every purchaser. So we made the commitment to, to furnish a unit in every block. Um, so, so guys can actually firstly see a furnished unit. Um, and then to answer your question about the furniture packages, it's becoming one of the fastest growing trends in the world. Now I know post COVID, it's quite a challenging thing to talk about when you start talking about Airbnb and the future of the rental market. Um, corporate letting, for example, where's the hotel industry? Um, we know in time that that's going to settle down. But one of the fastest growing trends in the world is, is the investment market where people actually furnishing their unit, putting, it, putting uh, their unit into rental pools, getting use of their unit, um, particularly in fast growing areas like the North Coast, you know, where not only is it a really great place to live, it's also a great place to visit as a tourist. So, you know, to answer your question about the bonding of furniture, we have seen some interesting things come out of the banks. Um, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that the banks would, be, would have a huge appetite at this moment to do it. Um, however, what we are offering is, is rental packages. So people that do want to um, activate a furniture, packages, uh, a furniture package within Lush, um, they don't actually have to outlay the, the, the cash for it. They can actually lease the furniture over a 36 month period. Um, if they've bought the property in a company, there's a lot of benefits around that, tax deductible benefits. Um, so we're seeing, we're seeing quite a big trend around that. Okay. So and is that answer. quite a unique offering specific to Union 3? The it's leasing that, option? Uh, yeah, it's something we've been doing for the last two or three years, uh, both on the residential and the commercial front. And, um, you know, furniture is every apartment, every house needs furniture. Um, and it is a cost and we're very aware of, of the cost implications. So we've actually come up with affordable packages. Um, we've worked with our suppliers like Smeg who've come to the party with really good packages. So you've got appliance packages, you've got um, uh, bedding packages, living room packages. So every purchaser can actually activate it room by room or they can actually do the entire package. Right down to window dressings, right down to the knives and forks um, if they wanted to. So yeah, it, it, it is something quite bespoke that we've been working on for years and um, it's great to see it come alive. I think in, in some of the recent, uh, recent purchases that we've had this last week, um, Devin was telling me that the, the guys have actually purchased the furniture package included in their unit. Is that right, Dev? Correct, yeah. yeah. Um, and Dev, just on that, I know you're quite excited about what's happened since lockdown. I mean, obviously it's, it's been just over a week um, since level three and since you can start operating. And there was a lot of traction during lockdown, but how's it resulted into sales over this period? Um, Steph, yeah, sure. We were up around 120% with lead generation. And I guess it's got to do with just people having more time on their hands, you know. We're just able now to surf the net or, or really educate themselves on, on what's out there as far as investment or, or in user for themselves. Um, so what we as a team, the week prior to level three, we started an engagement for setting up site visits and, and planning those sort of um, interactions. And what's very positive that in the last two weeks, we've had three sales at Lush, um, which is phenomenal. And I think Davey's touched on it, Cliff's also touched on it. Uh, Lush is really starting to show off now. Uh, the makeup's starting to come on. It's, it's not this big chunk of concrete anymore. All the soft stuff's starting to come on. So um, Lush in particular, we're very excited about those last 20, 25 units that are still for sale. Um, so yeah, we we just playing catch up at the moment, Steph. If I took you through into my sales office, you'll see four sales dogs on their phones, setting up, setting up appointments for the weekend, and yeah, just interacting, getting guys out to site. So it took twenty to twenty-five left. Uh, twenty-three to be exact. Yeah. And then Dev, in terms of those who've invested today, to those who bought today. What's the mix between those who live permanently and those who are investors who will be looking to um, lease out the units? Um, Steph, we're still uh, working through that process, um, engaging with, with our 60 or 70 odd homeowners now and finding out what their needs are. Um, I think a lot of that's going to come off um, knowledge. I think, as Cliffy touched on short-term rental, I think there's there's a big opportunity to explore there where you can benefit from a, a, a yield perspective. Um, but at the same time, enjoy your investments. So use it when it's not rented out. So we are walking that road, but to answer your question, we're probably around 60, 40, 60% investor, 40% end user, either permanent or weekend lock. Okay. 
Okay. And then, then Dave, so obviously we're in a pretty abnormal time now. I think those who don't understand the market might not understand the implications of the interest rate cuts, but also will be worried about various different factors that are currently existing. Hmm. And I put you in the spot here and ask you, if you were an existing Lush owner, which I know, I know you are, but <laughs> recommendation to those who are investors and those who are looking to either, they've either got three options now. They could either look to resell when they take transfer, or they could look to rent out their units. And then they've got two options. They could either go long-term rental or short-term rental. What would your recommendation be? Um, Steph, I think there's merits for all three, um, depending on your personal circumstance. So the, the flip route, um, which is definitely not something I would recommend, but there's an upside. If you look at availability and if you look at a price point, what our investors paid historically to what they're selling for now or trading for now in, those first, or in that first phase, there is an upside. But I think the true value is going to come over time. And we were talking, or I was talking about the, about the triggers earlier on. And I think just um, as time goes by, in the short term, not I'm talking five, 10 years, I think this next two years for us, and when I say for us as Elaleni, I think it's really when we're going to shine over these next two years. So my recommendation would be is to hold on to the guy who's looking to on sell at least for the next year to 18 months. Um, and I think there's also merit to short term and long term. Um, I think your safe route is to go long-term and what we've seen, and this is statistics, where you can go into private property now or to Prop 24 and you can look just under 20,000 rand a month in your flagship estates, there's very limited stock. What that shows you is there's a demand and there is a, a window of opportunity there for your long-term tenants. So I think comforting and even for me personally as investor, I would like to know I'm going to get that, that return, that guaranteed return for the next 12 months. And to me, that's quite exciting. But if I do want to be a bit bullish, and I think time's going to tell over, over these next three months um, to what uh, especially domestic travel is going to be like. Um, I think that's going to be for me as an investor, that will be my deciding point of whether to go the short-term route or to stick to the long-term for the next 12 months. And will there be a solution in place for both? For sure, for sure. Okay. Um, okay, and then, and then I know you mentioned you've got quite a unique solution in place from a short-term perspective. But do you want to touch on that? Sure, Steve. <laughs> so, yeah, no, we've been, we've been at it for the past or as a sales entity um, over the last few years where you go after a handover process and things almost start to dissolve as far as that management's concerned and that upkeep to a brand um, as far as your rental solution, if it's long-term or short-term. I think what a lot of investors are looking for is someone to look after that process for them. So where we've seen the gap in the market is getting back to your short-term rental and a solution for our investors where someone takes over the, the whole process for you as far as uh, bookings, as far as listings, as far as key handovers. And we've been, like I said, over the past two years, trying to find the best solution. What we've now negotiated and um, managed to close off as a deal, um, we've secured a partnership with a company called Altido. Now, Altido are an international service provider. Um, they Airbnb's biggest partner in Europe. They've been trying to get into South Africa over the past few years as far as the rental management company is concerned. Um, they've just been looking at the right areas. And obviously, North Coast KZN is uh, an area that they really want to establish themselves. So that's a process we're going to be managing for them um, on a partnership basis. Um, as I touched on earlier, our concern is what the domestic travel is going to be like. But I think we're fortunate to where we positioned on the North Coast that um, our domestic travel will still be relatively hard to the rest of the country. So yeah, we'll be engaging with our homeowners. Uh, we're starting right here, we're starting with Lush. And we'll be engaging with our homeowners on this process, how it works. Um, Altido have the most amazing platforms where they integrate into a bookings.com and Travago's. So their solution, in our opinion, is, is second to none. No one really touches it. Um, so we're excited to educate our homeowners about how the process is and how beneficial this is going to be for their investments. Um, and like I said, we'll be doing this over the next few weeks. Okay. 
And then so Dave, just to summarize, obviously there, there are various different options. It depends on the, the investor in terms of what option is best for them. And they just obviously need to engage with you, Scotty, and the team and just yeah, for sure. really plan ahead in terms of what their solution is and work with you guys in terms of being able to line up tenants long-term or short-term, depending on what uh, route they go. Spot on. So Tina, I was going to bring you in here. I've never seen this quite for, for this long. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I think, I think the first question we all, all want to know is what's happened with the deeds office and are they firing on all cylinders yet? Uh, no, they are unfortunately not firing on all cylinders. Um, they are open, however, which is a big step in the right direction. But uh, they keep closing. So I think that from the way going forward, if we have to view it as a, a holistic going forward, I think we're going to have to navigate our way through um, deeds office opening and shutting because it's all dependent on whether or not somebody gets infected with the virus whether that is a conveyancer who's attending on the deeds office or a deeds office examiner and um, the surveyor general's office is connected to the deeds office. So you know, it affects the, the deeds office affects the surveyor general's office. Although I know that recently they've tried to separate the entrances and uh, make them not accessible to each respective uh, department. So yeah, um, Pretoria Deeds Office closed two days ago because of an infection. Cape Town closed yesterday. So it's around the country. We're not unique in KZN. And I think we've just got to be ahead of the game where we can. We've got to be as prepared as we can so that we can take the gap. Um, the other complication, obviously, is the um, local, local authorities where we need rates clearance certificates. So unfortunately, they're also up and down. Their departments are open and then closed. Uh, they're also subject to people getting the virus. So whatever way we look at it, we have challenges that we need to overcome. And as long as everybody works together and cooperates, I think we can be ahead of the curve. Let's call it that. Um, yeah, uh, that's, that's really all we can hope for going forward. Okay. And then I know Lush has attracted a combination of first-time buyers and investors who invest in numerous properties. So I think for the first-time buyers, many will probably have learned that when you buy directly from a developer, there's no transfer duty. But I think also the, the fact that there's a 20,000 Rand deposit as opposed to a 10% deposit, which generally is the norm within the property market. What impact does, do those two things alone have on the out-of-pocket costs that a person might have between uh, purchasing and transferring? It's definitely, in my opinion, you know, to buy um, an off-plan development from the developer is hugely beneficial for a purchaser because you are saving, in the first instance, you're saving transfer duty, which, you know, if I have a look on a broad spectrum of the prices at, at Lush, you can be saving anything from 80000 to 250000 depending on where you're at and so far as the purchase price is concerned. So it's a big amount of money to have to outlay um, on top of, uh, you know, the fact that you don't have to pay um, a, a big VAT component. It's absorbed by the developer and the purchase price. So the developer takes that on. Um, and there are other costs, obviously, which the developer takes on as well. Having also to outlay only a small deposit until you get down the line where you actually have to take transfer and you have to make sure that everything is then converted to cash effectively so that your price can be paid out. Um, is also very beneficial because these developments take, there's a lead time and they take a fair amount of time to be built um, and for the conveyancing process then to happen thereafter. So, you know, to not have a, a large chunk of your money tied up sitting there, you know, effectively doing nothing for you is a big bonus for purchases. Um, so, yes, um, I think it's very beneficial, uh, particularly the way Lush has been structured because it's an even lower deposit than most other developments require purchases to pay up front. Okay. And then, and then Tina, in terms of what are the legal steps that a typical buyer will go through from this stage we're at now um, through again to the transfer phase? So we were excited to hear the other day that we should be getting the draft sectional plan during the course of next week. And what happens then from a, a let's call it the roadmap to transfer perspective, is we get a copy of the draft sectional plan. We work off that draft sectional plan to prepare all of the transfer documents. That draft sectional plan, the minute it comes to us, also gets submitted to the Surveyor General's Office for approval. The approval process, let's call it pre-lockdown, 
was taking roughly six to eight weeks. We suspect that it would take a bit longer now because of the, the backlog. Um, so we're kind of working off 12 weeks at the moment, but it's really a thumb suck. We don't really know how long it's going to take, and it depends how many times they open and close. So optimistically, um, we would like to be ready to lodge the transfers um, pretty shortly after that uh, sectional plan has been approved by the Surveyor General. So once we get the draft sectional plan, as I said, we prepare all of the transfer documents. We then contact the purchasers to call in at our offices or we call on the, on the purchasers, particularly now with COVID. Logistically, we just have to work that out. Um, and to get all of those documents signed and to process whatever we process. What we need to process is really just liaising with the rates department to get a rates clearance certificate for each unit. Um, liaising with the Elaleni Homeowners Association to get a consent to transfer, which is really a formality, but it's a requirement. We have to liaise with the purchasers' banks, where the purchasers aren't paying cash. And we have to make sure that um, we, the first thing we give those, those banks is the copy of the draft sectional plan, because it's the first time they're going to be seeing it. And there's certain checks and balances that they do on their side as the institution that's going to be bonding the unit and is going to be funding the respective purchaser. So we liaise with the attorneys that have been appointed to register the bonds and we make sure that we all dovetail so that by the time the sectional plan is approved, we literally have roughly 10 days um, lead time before we can start lodging transfers in the deeds office. The first batch of transfers is we always try and get as many in as possible with that first sectional plan. And that's why even though a transfer may be ready, so my transfer as an investor might be ready, but you know somebody else's might not be ready. We do wait until we have a sufficiently sizable batch because once the documents are registered, the sectional title registers open and the first batch of transfers goes through, it does take quite a while for those documents to be released from the deed office, which means we can only then register future transfers once those documents are released. So it's important for us, timing is important and as many transfers as we can get in as possible, we do that in the first batch. And then only those that can't make the first batch for whatever reason we leave for future batches. Okay. And then, and then Dave, obviously what would that handover process look like for owners between now and, and the period? So Steph, um, the handover process, um, a member of the development team being either myself or Cliff will, um, will accompany one of the sales guys to the physical handover and, and we will personally show everybody around the units ourselves. Um, during the handover process, um, all the buyers are going to get given a comprehensive handover pack. And that is going to be an all you need to know document or all you need to know file that's going to have all your information relative to your unit, relative to Lush and relative to Elaleni itself. It will also have in it things like your, um, your warranties for your SMEG um, oven and hob, for your Samsung air conditioner, if that's what you chose. And then things like your uh, electrical compliance certificates, your gas compliance certificates and that. So everything you'll need will be in that, in that pack. Um, it'll also have contact numbers for various people to get a hold of uh, with regards to, to your unit. Um, and um, after that date, um, there will be a period in which uh, buyers have an opportunity to snag the unit. They will then submit the snag unit back to us, the developer, and then the contractor will have a certain period of time to rectify all those snags. Um, we're certainly hoping that those will be kept to a bare minimum as We've, we've put a, a system in place whereby before handover, the architects are going to snag the units, every single unit themselves. Um, Cliff and, um, and the members of the development team are going to go through after the architects and sort of be a second filter to that process. Um, and then only then will the, the buyers be, um, will be, be given the opportunity to do that when the units will be handed over. So, we, so we're really hoping that we won't inconvenience anyone with any big snags. Dave, if, yeah. I, if you don't mind, if I can just comment on that. That snagging process is very important from the conveyancing process's perspective because the financial institutions that are mortgaging those units will not allow the attorneys 
to register those bonds or even lodge them in the deeds office until such time as the purchaser has signed what they commonly refer to as the happy letter. And the happy letter is really only signed once all the snagging has been attended to. So it's important that the purchasers, as soon as they can hand over, or as soon as possible thereafter, give you as the developers a complete list of what it is that um, it needs to be rectified so that it can be done in the shortest possible time frame, so that they don't miss being part of any particular batch. Because unless we properly coordinate all of this, there are people who possibly don't realize that and they get left out of a batch or get left out of the main batch when the sectional title register is opened because their bank won't let the bond be uh, lodged in the deeds office and that would then potentially prejudice them because they would only then form part of a following batch. So obviously the idea is to get as many in as possible in your first batch. Um, so yeah, if I could just make that point, just so that purchasers are aware of that. Okay. And those, I mean, those appointments are obviously, obviously going to be scheduled for each individual person. Yeah. So, so we'll send out, um, we'll send out a, a personalized letter to, to every person um, notifying them of the date that their particular unit will be handed over. And then they will just reply to us with a date that suits them to come in and actually do the physical handover. Okay. Dev, there's a question that's come, uh, come through here for me, which basically just refers to interest rates and the impact of interest rates. So I know, I, I mean, I put my personal belief, and I've said it in a few, a few discussions, is really that it's the best thing that could possibly have happened for the property market during a very uncertain time is these interest rate cuts. Uh, so we've all been saying it. It's the fourth rate cut this year, lowest interest mm -hmm. rates we have in 50 years. For those that are existing investors and for those who are sitting on the fence in terms of guys wanting to get into the market, what a big impact do you think it's had on, on those people? Uh, on, on which people? On the, on the guys who are sitting on the fence there for? I, I think both. I mean, I've just in terms of fi financial um, implications it has for people who want to get into the market, um, possibly as well as people who already are have purchased but still need to take transfer. Yeah, Steph, I think, I think what's important is either your investor or your investor-to-be or your guy who's on the fence who's, who's thinking about it needs to be well-educated and actually sat down in a room with myself or one of my colleagues and to actually educate themselves on the actual process. We, there's been 100 webinars which talk about how good the interest rate cuts have been and this is how much you're saving, but when you actually sit down and go through it, um, it makes so much more sense. Um, so yeah, and, and we were laughing the other day. Uh, one, of the, one of our buyers at Lush we bought two weeks ago, um, he was actually potential, uh, a tenant. He inquired off a Lush website to rent a unit. After going through the process, and again, being able to sit down with a professional to understand his needs and understand his affordability, he was not far off um, renting opposed to taking out a bond and to walk through that process because it is, it's a daunting process to understand um, how much can I afford will I still have enough to live um, we've got amazing bond consultants who again will go through every single sense and help you understand how much you can afford and how much you'll be left so once you get your head around that process um, ideally with a decent deposit with a 10 or 20 uh, percent deposit um, you're now a property owner in arguably the best estates in the country, one of. Um, and again, another, another um, thing we did last week, or well, not this week, when we we're looking at that rental gap between the 15 and 20,000 a month online, if you're trying to rent in that bracket in a flagship estate, it's very limited. The same goes for purchasing. When you look at 2.2 or 2.3 to 2.8 or just north of 3 million, um, there's very limited supply. And yes, you're going to have options off plan, but as they've said, in, in the next two weeks, you're going to be able to walk into a villa that's completed. You're able to see a boab, you're able to see 100 palm trees that are going, it's now real. So it's not this off plan that we're competing with hundreds of properties out in the market. This is now a real product that you can walk into, you can see it, you can touch it. And um, it's just exciting to be part of that process with, as a salesman. And if I may ask, just in terms of existing owners, what type of rentals do you think they might get? Yes, um, Sorry, Dave. 
Um, you know, I think a lot has been said about, about the interest rate cuts and the affordability um, aspect of it, which is fantastic. There's a, there's a massive saving, uh, you know, on your bond installment every, every month. But, I, you know, a little tip that I heard the other day and that, that I com completely agree with wholeheartedly is if, you know, if you, if, if you bought it last, and I say this to our, 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 our current buyers, if they, if they bought last year when the, when the interest, uh, when the prime rate was at sort of 9.75 or even 10, I think it may have even been at 10.25 when we launched. You know, you've, you've calculated your affordability then at 10.25. You know, we're sitting at a prime rate much lower than that right now. My, my advice to people would be to carry on paying the same amount that they would have paid back then because you know the end goal of taking a bond is to actually draw down on that bond and to knock it on the head and to actually have an unencumbered property at the end of the loan term you know so yes there is a saving but if you can afford to keep paying the amount that you would have when you bought the property i think it's a great idea to do that and actually make some some very quick headway into the capital portion of that bond you know when the interest rates do do start going up again in two three four years time you will, you will have a lot less of a loan amount over that property than you would have if you paid you know, just the, the bare minimum right now. So depending on your financial position, if you can afford it, I would carry on paying the, the original installments that you would have paid at nine and a half or 9.75 or whatever the prime rate was when you bought. Yeah. And I, I mean, I know just, just to add to that, I mean, I, I know we had a chat with Uber last week and they were saying they expect definitely another half a percent between now and the end of the year in terms of down and then probably for interest rates to stay quite steady where they are uh, for the balance of next year so it really I, I think probably gives a lot of comfort to existing buyers yeah. who just know that that um, that will, will will come down further and will stay in low for, for an extended period of time and i know we've always said it before when the market is tough under under certain conditions the rental market is generally high so a lot of people can't necessarily afford to get into the market and I think what it does, it maybe allows those people who couldn't afford to get into the market to maybe just get above their means, existing guys to have lower monthly costs, but it also means that the rental market is always going to be strong, which I think is really, really positive. Exactly. And, and you know, just last week, we were actually quoted on, on a loan that we were applying for. We were quoted a five-year fixing rate of eight point, just under 8.4%, which, which shows that the banks or the gurus that are a lot cleverer than I are predicting that over the next five years, it shouldn't average more than that, which is a very positive thing if you're investing in property. You know, if you're taking a, a loan term over 10 years and you, you have the opportunity to pay interest at, a, at an average of 8.4% over the first five year uh, term of your loan, that's a very advantageous position to be in. And it's, you know, I think if, if you had told people that six months ago, they would have been falling, um, falling over each other to buy property. So I think we've got to keep all the negativity in perspective. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and then Dave, just a question from Sharon Bishop. It just says, how close will your rent come to covering your bond? I know it's, it, it's, it's very specific to different products. Yeah, it, it's obviously very specific. To, it's different to, to uh, specific to different products, but it's also specific to how big the loan is, you know? If someone's going out and getting a hundred percent, hundred percent bond, it's obviously the, the bond installment is quite a lot. Um, the bond installment will be quite a lot more. But I suspect that you know, if if, if you work it out with a with a let's say a loan um, uh, interest rate, let's say an interest rate of seven point two five percent, it's not inconceivable that you could get uh, seven point two five percent as a as a net yield in the first year of your investment which effectively means that the, the net yield is servicing the interest on the loan. And anything you put in over and above that will actually go directly into the capital portion of your bond. So, you know, it's, 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 it's a very, very favorable position to be in. And it's something that I've never seen before in the residential investment market. And I don't think it's something we will see again. So I suspect to answer the question, I suspect that your, your, um, if you've taken an 80% or a 90% loan, I suspect that your your rental your net rental income will be very close to servicing the um, the instalment on your bond. And Deb, what do you think those amounts could be for for different owners in terms of rental income? Um, Steph, so again, we've we've based our predictions on currently what you're paying. So again, if you're comparing apples with apples, your other leading estates, uh, you're looking at ten to twelve thousand for your one beds. Uh, you're looking at fifteen to eighteen thousand for your two beds, 
and then your three bedroom villas uh, around the 22,000 to 24,000 a month. Okay. So, everyone, I think we're going we're gonna to start to wrap up. I know we said we want to try and keep it around, around 45 minutes. I don't know if anyone's got any last things they want to add from a panel perspective. Steph, just while we're sitting here, just uh, going back to the question about the deeds office, I've just received uh, an email from our agents in Peter Maritzburg to say that although the deeds office is open today, they're currently offline. They don't know when they're going to be back online and their <laughs> lodgements can take place. So it's exactly what I said previously. Every day is a new day in our lives these days and we actually don't know what to expect. So while we were expecting certain people's transactions to be registered today, we now have to phone them up and say, unfortunately, it's not going to happen today. And that creates untold hassles for us because we've closed investments and done all those things on the back of wanting to pay out on registration. And now we have to reverse all of that. So it's just part of what I think uh, we have to face going forward. There's nothing else we can do but weather the storm and just try and navigate around these issues. It just keeps you on your toes, I guess, hey? <laughs> yeah, it's not such fun though. We have got to try and explain to somebody why their transfer is not happening. Yeah, sure. Okay, so, so thanks to everyone. I think to, thanks to all of those who've, who've joined and I think for the questions and, and again to, to the panel for your time. We really appreciate it. What we'll be doing is we'll be doing the same as with the last one, sending a mail out pretty shortly in the next couple of days that literally has a summary of the chat with a link to the actual recording on the blog and we'll send it out to all existing owners of, of Lush, everyone in the database and everyone who registered for the chat. It just gives you the ability to be able to share it on to people who maybe weren't uh, available, weren't on the chat. And um, yeah, and, and, and thanks to all of you for joining. And what we're gonna try and do is, is, is keep this momentum. I think it really is a critical period leading up to transfers and try and do these at least for every four to six weeks, really give you that unique insight, just give you raw insights into, into stuff that you might not, not know or would like to know. So just hope everyone has a, has a good afternoon, has a great week going forward and that level three of lockdown continues to, 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 to serve everyone well and you all stay healthy and safe. Thank you. Well done, Steph. Steph. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Steph. Guys, have a good day. Thanks. Cheers. 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 Ciao, ciao.